laws of nature, there is nothing impossible except that the state of your mind makes it so. marvellous they're intelligent enough to recognise that every so often I come up with some interesting intelligent statements. Maybe if they would so daft they would see all of it as interesting information. Cleaning up this planet is going to be a big job. If we're going to get the climate back to what we want a lot of work got to be done. But one thing is certain, you need energy. That's important. Without John, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be the man I am today. John changed my entire life. Turned it around completely. The man is the most honest, sincere uh, friend that you could ever hope to have. He has tremendous stamina and has a, uh, almost an unheard of ability to go without sleep. Uh, he operates on between, I think, three and four hours uh, max. For 40 years I have been searching to find the clue to the cell effect. But what it did for my mind, it stimulated, it motivated it, and turned my whole life upside down. I've met Professor Searle and his associates. Uh, they're nice people. Clearly they believe in the SEG and the, the effects that they're talking about. Basically the design is a, a conventional generator. So, according to so, tapped into zero point energy without knowing how he did it. Here we had something we couldn't understand. It wasn't doing what I wanted. That's what a generator wanted. The only person that I know of who has ever succeeded in making a serial effect generator, which it was named by someone else, uh, given that name by someone else. But the only person I ever know who ever made one is John Cyril. The, the problem is uh, the people, they want to, s to see the display. I think uh, 69 to 71. The German TV uh, sent a, a report in color and there was shown a, a flyable disc. It was hovering in the, the top of the trees, I think 25 meters. The electron flow is accelerated to an extremely high rate and it creates a vacuum around the device and in that vacuum you develop numbing cold and numbing cold as we know today is a function of superconductivity It also, which is, has not been known, a function of gravitational force. This thing wanted to fly. For over 60 years, John Searle has tried to give to the world a new kind of energy system, one that would free mankind from the burdens of oil and fossil fuels. From his dreams as a child in pre-World War II England came an understanding of mathematics and magnetic forces that would change his life. From a childhood game of hopscotch came a new understanding of magic squares, a mathematical principle that is 5,000 years old. John Searle is deaf. His deafness is the result of beatings and neglect suffered as a child. But the isolation would serve his purpose. Perhaps this physical limitation accounts for his freedom of thinking. He could think laterally and not be bound by conventional rules taught through conventional methods that may have an adverse effect on the human mind. In his quiet universe, his experience would have a different effect, an unusual effect, a natural effect, the Searle effect. On his own, and without any real formal education, John Searle is possessed by an insatiable curiosity that would lead him to conclude that nothing is impossible except that which the state of your mind makes it so.
John Searle is known all over the world as the inventor of the Searle Effect Generator, a magnetic device consisting of one or more rings, also called plates, and a number of cylindrical rollers that, when in motion, generate electricity. The generator is a magnetic device that is uh, it totally magnetic. It is its own prime mover. It will self-start and continue to run, and as far as we know, we could say never stop. The Searle effect is an effect based on magnetic fields that generate the continual motion of magnetized rollers around magnetized rings, producing electric energy. The generator runs in harmony with nature. The law of the squares is harmony with nature. But the Searle effect is a great deal more than a simple generator. In our polluted and energy-starved world, it is the hope of all mankind that we find the solutions that lead us to both prosperity and harmony with nature. Is it possible to maintain mankind's industrial output and at the same time reduce the pollutants that are slowly killing planet Earth? Is there a way to increase the productivity of the human species as we rid ourselves of the poisons and recover the waters of this world? If we're going to get the climate back to what we want, a lot of work got to be done. One thing is certain, you need energy. That's important. And it must be cheap as possible. Preferable, no pollution. No noise, no heat, no vibration, no pollution. The Searle Effect Generator. The perfect machine. As you build this, it, when you find out that it runs without friction, it runs without a governor, it runs will accept a, any load and meet it, it will dive down in temperature at one point if you build it cor correctly and actually levitate and actually lift off the earth, developing its own gravitational field. When you see all these things and you realize that this is a perfect machine, it is an entity, it's the closest thing to a living thing that you can, man can make. Does John Searle have the answer? Is John Searle's invention the point of impact between the question, what if there is a machine that could save mankind, and the answer, the Searle Effect Generator? People say, well, you can't do this. You're going to upset the entire world economy. Uh, what, you know, the whole economy is based on oil. We have, uh, and it works, they're saying. Well, it works very well for the people who are running the economy, uh, but not necessarily for everyone else. I still uh, maintain that it will not ruin the economy. It will be a very a strong paradigm shift, much the same as the shift from horse and buggy to automobile. Surely this point of impact would produce energy of its own, human energy, emotional energy, joy, relief, hope, wonder, or perhaps the darker side of human emotions, greed, hate, and jealousy. All these years I've learnt one thing, you can't trust anyone with this technology, they want to steal it. And any worker seeing this and find out how it works could sell it to another company for millions. Because this too is the Searle effect. John Roy Robert Searle was born at the Downs, a workhouse, a place of disgrace in Wantage, England on May 2nd, 1932. Ironically, that same year, Werner Heisenberg of Germany was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for the creation of quantum mechanics. Put simply, quantum mechanics is the study of the relationship between energy and matter. In particular, the relationship between electrons and photons, the area in which the actual Searle effect takes place. It's photons. That's the role of, of grounding their energy to the coil. It is simply throwing photons out. That is what you see trapped in the magnetic field around it. John's father, Robert Henry Searle, and mother, Violet Gertrude Maud Pierce, would have two more children. John's sister, Iris, would arrive in 1934, and his brother, Peter, came some time after. Robert claimed that Peter was not his child, and one evening, he just never came home. Violet was abandoned, and soon after would be sentenced to jail for neglecting the children. A warrant was issued for Robert, but he was never found. As a child, it appears from all official uh, records, I was ill-treated. 
and bashed about and in the end the court uh, placed me in the care of Dr. Bernardo Holmes in England who then put me out to foster parents. John would lose contact with his brother and sister. He would be placed in foster homes, the first one at the Chestnuts, Suffolk County, England. Here he would be the responsibility of two women. There wasn't any man at the Chestnut. The school did not have no male teachers. So there's no male to force me into believing anything or do anything. Later in life, John would insist that being raised by women would be one of the most beneficial aspects of an otherwise difficult and at times brutal childhood. Now, I never knew the ABC. I couldn't do sums, I couldn't do anything, basically. Nobody cared about that. What they didn't know was, I have no hearing. <laughs> so they were wasting their time talking to me. So they beat me. Uh, if that was how, that made no difference. The 1930s were a time of great depression and great breakthroughs. Albert Einstein's contribution E equals MC squared made way for huge strides in science. Very soon, abstract mathematical proofs would replace ether theory as the best explanation of all things and their relativity. Others, like Nikolai Tesla, would cling to the idea that energy was all around us and that we could access this energy and transport it through the atmosphere without the need for meters or utility companies. Relativity would win the day, and ether theory would become a relic of the past. It would soon be known as archaic physics. While the greatest minds of the 20th century uncovered theories about how the universe works, far beneath this lofty exchange, four-year-old John Searle was dreaming. His dreams were specific and repeated two dreams that would alternate four times a year over the next six years. I had dreams, and those dreams are the key to all the work which I do. In fact, they're the key to all my knowledge. The dreams were actually recurring nightmares that frightened John as a boy. He would remember them, but not understand their meaning until the right time. You wake up screaming. My mother said, that's the devil. That's my foster mother. She could give me a good belt in the belt the devil out of me. He finished his schooling at Thorndon Infant in 1942. He then entered I Secondary School in Suffolk County, England. John would leave Suffolk County in 1944. He was transferred to Russell Coates Naval School in Dorset. There he trained to take his part in the war effort. By 1946, the war was over. John left Naval School. He got his first job at British Rewind's Electrical Repairs and boarded at number 30 Crawley Road in London. That was the first job I was given by the Dr. Menard Holmes. Uh, they placed me there for, as apprentice for electrical uh, engineering. This would be the turning point in the life of John Searle. The Searle effect is developed from the law of the squares. And it is from these squares that John Searle developed his generator and flying discs. But it didn't stop there. Over the course of his lifetime, John Searle's understanding of the squares would be used by him to explain all aspects of life in the universe. From DNA to relativity, from single-celled life to the human being, from transportation to construction of buildings, the squares could be used to understand everything. When I took up my training as an apprentice electrical engineer. But the third day, I was presented a docket to take to the stores, and I saw this tube with a small tube buff. I asked the foreman what that meant. He said, that's too square. 